Hey, it's WDHA's Reconnect with Rockers. My favorite part of Reconnect sometimes is connecting for the first time with artists. And I'm super, super excited about Bad Omens for a, a multitude of reasons. First, I want to introduce you to uh, the members that we have with us on Reconnect today. I've got Noah and I've got Jolly. I was really excited when I found out that Jolly would be here because I was like, Jolly, because I always hear Noah talk about Jolly, you know, in, in, a, in a great way, of course, but I think I just never had anybody on the show named Jolly before. So, so guys, welcome. First of all, it's great to see your faces, sort of. You too. Thanks for having yeah, us. Thank you very much for having us. And um, I want to talk a little bit about, um, let's start with talking about being put into a box or labels. When you mm. guys, you know, launched Bad Omens, people were calling you, okay, they're a metal core band. They're a new metal band. The thing mm. I love about the band is I think you are one of the most unboxable new bands. I hear <laughs> so much in the music, everything seems almost like a separate kind of vignette, like mm -hmm. a separate visual journey for people. Was it always that way? Did you guys progress that way from, you know, doing the debut record to now? How, how did it become where there's just, there's not one sound for Bad Omens? And I literally, when I first started becoming a fan of you guys, had to listen and then go back and listen again and go, this is the same band, right? Because <laughs> there's just so many textures and flavors to the music. Yeah, we, we take a lot of pride in that. And I think it all kind of started with how we like to make music. And then we kind of, you know, like formed and, and molded the brand and the visuals and the imagery around that because we've always just, Jolly and I in particular, because we do like the production of the music. We, we like to have a very cinematic, like, you know, just, I don't know, outer worldly, like mysterious yeah, just, type. Just big and, and unique. And it's never fun to make like, you know, the same songs 12 times. So we're really trying to like mm -hmm. stretch a little bit here, a little bit there. Let's do it like this. There's no limits, whatever like sounds good. Now I've heard a lot of people say, like, oh, this is very different from anything else. You can kind of still hear that it is the Bad Omens touch. Yeah. And something I joke about a lot, I like to say is like, people talk about finding your sound and like, oh, we really finally found our sound with this song or this record. And like, I don't ever want to feel like I've found Bad Omens' sound. And like, I, no. want, it, I want it to just always be ever-changing. Continuous journey. You know, like every yes. record, I want it to sound like almost like a new band because we're I just like... I love that. I love we, that. And it does, like, though. It does. It really, <laughs> really does. Yeah. And like, I, I feel like with every record, we, we do like find a sound, at least consistency for one record as a whole. And then we just dial that in and like spend so much time crafting it that we feel like we did our best that we could with that sound. And then we move on instead of trying to like just one up that sound in particular, we try to do a whole new sound and then one up that sound versus just try to just keep perfecting the same thing over and over. Like, I feel like you should just walk away from it and appreciate it and then try something new. And that's, that's kind of how we approach the music. I feel like. And I love, you'd mentioned sort of what I call, you know, being a visual band and mm -hmm. a visual band. I don't mean you go see them live and there's pyrotechnics and they're, you know, right. jumping around on stage. Hey, we're visual mm -hmm. uh, it's the you know the picture painting you know for me like right. when i was a kid it was always like iron maiden you know we're, for me we're like my or judas Priest. like the metal bands were always very visual because the music was so big and passionate and i could always um visualize pictures in my head right and you guys are definitely one of those visual bands so who for you um was a band that you know were a visual band and you kind of followed that path a little bit Hmm. This is, the, this is the craziest question. Always like, <laughs> who, who do you, who do you look up? on just like so much stuff. Yeah, it's hard. I've never really had like a favorite band growing up, and yeah. and the way that we do things with Bad Omens, at least the way I try to do things, we always like are working hard on like either a budget or like a, a time constraint or just being a new band. There's only so many resources we have access to that we like try to push the limit with. But I feel like there's obviously like bands I love growing up, like one of my all time favorite bands is Disturbed and then Linkin Park. And then after that, I got into like softer stuff like Fall Out Boy and Panic to the Disco, I think is a great <laughs> example of a band that was like very visual and yeah. like, they had oh, their yeah. own, like they had, they had like their own universe in their music that you could just kind of imagine it just would sound. Yeah. Um, but as I got, you know, older and into more, more types of music and I started expanding my horizons past rock and metal, I honestly would say, especially for the newer stuff that we're writing, um, that's not released yet even, we're taking a lot of influence visually. And I think 
production wise from more like dark pop and a hip hop driven artist. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dog power. Um, dog power. I love like, that. It's okay. We're cool. I yeah. love dogs. She can, she can pop uh, right in anytime. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but like I, weekend, I love that. Example, I love that. And one that... of my favorite artists and that's like a kind of way outside of rock world, you know, Sure. but I feel like there's so much influence that can be taken to like make the rock world more interesting from, you know, the pop and the hip hop side of music that a lot of, you know, more elitist, like gatekeeping rock and metal people don't really consider because they just think it's, oh, it's pop. It's not, it's not cool, you know? And I'm like, there's, there's a lot of value in, in every type of art, you know, even if it's not music. No doubt. No doubt about it. And, and I love your version of, of Come Undone, which I think is the, you know, pe- people <laughs> that have done that tune. I know it wasn't supposed to make it on a record or anything, but it's so great. I mean, it's yeah, just so great. Just like, you know what? Should we just throw it on? We recorded yeah, drums it in our garage. It was so long ago, too, that we had d- done that song. And we were like, well, we're doing a deluxe. Let's just give yeah. them everything we oh, got. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's cool. You that, guys that did such, really such a great job. Such a great job. <laughs> so, and you guys are going to play, which I think is awesome. We love getting the live mm-hmm. performance, something that we would do in our WDHA studio, you know, here in New Jersey. I want to talk, though, Noah, about the fans and how they view you. Because I always mm-hmm. like to talk to artists on Reconnect about the fan base. Because I think for you guys, that's probably something that being in quarantine and being locked down and not being able to tour is something you miss the most. They view yeah. you as, you know, you're kind of their poet. They love mm-hmm. your songwriting, y- your connection with them, and the whole band's connection, obviously. But I've noticed the fan base, always the comments are just, um, they feel like you're in their head. <laughs> No pressure, of course. No pressure um, at all. Um, do yeah, you feel, no, I, talk, talk about that connection, uh, you know, for a relatively new band, making that connection so quickly and having like everybody just be like, these guys are huge. These guys are massive. These guys got me through a tough time. These guys, that was very, for me, reading that were comments that when WDHA first started playing, like say Lincoln Park, mm-hmm. you know, you'd see, you hear similar comments, you know, at the time social right. media wasn't like bing, 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 you know, but you would hear people say that sort of thing. And not every band right. has that, you know? I've spoken to bands about it before. Some people like to go out for the live show and they're just like, yeah, I'd love to see this band live every time they come to town. Other people, it's way more heady. You guys mm-hmm. definitely have that heady connection. So what's that like for you? Uh, I, that's very important to me, not only just, you know, from a career point, I think that there's a lot of longevity in putting like passion and emotion and just yourself and your experiences into music because even though we're all, everyone in the world is entirely different. We all go through our own things and our own experiences and problems and overcome our own adversities. There's a way we can rate, relate with each other when it comes to, to music and like the way we convey and express ourselves, even if it's not music, if it's in a painting or a film or, you know, you're a director or whatever. And I think something that we try really hard to do every time we write a record is just make sure that we love it like we're never in the right in the studio because i've been in like a lot of studio settings with other bands and same with jolly like when we're writing with other artists and we're like oh you should do like this part right here so that people like mosh or like this part so people like jump up and down yeah. it's kind of writing for other people more yeah. so than writing for yourself and, and we never think that way we, we're like we'll finish a song and be like people are probably gonna hate this <laughs> oh, <laughs> but like okay. but we don't care like we want to make a song that we love and we like feel 100 percent confident in and and by not following trends, I guess it, you don't exactly blow up overnight. Like we're kind of a slow burn type of band, I feel like. And I, I see a lot of comments from people that are like, yeah, like I, I had to like kind of be alone with this record to realize how much I liked it. Like, because I feel like it's not, at least some of our songs, they're not songs you can just like pop on, on a car ride, like to, to the beach with your friends or something. And like, it, it, might, it might pull you out of the mood if it's a really sad one or, or vice versa, you know, and. I think that it creates more of a personal relationship with the band than like something that you just like put on at a party, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, it's a catalog. There's a place for that, you know? Absolutely. You're a catalog band. You're a band that I think kind of take, you know, take people on, on a trip and that's, that's mm-hmm. great writing and, and good songs. And I love that, you know, when you say we're a band that's kind of building the fan base, mm-hmm. that, that's organically, I mean, that's the way you do it. You yeah. know, organically, a lot of, a lot of my that's all, the way you do it. All-time favorite bands. That's that's kind of the how I at least how I feel like I witnessed their growth. Like even from like Nine Inch Nails, which is a band that was around before I was even like sentient, um, <laughs> to like newer bands. You know, like a Day to Remember and like stuff like that. That are I watch like you know just take so long to get to where they are now, and now they're just you know crushing it. They're huge. And they had this like slow burn because they were just doing whatever they wanted at the time. And they weren't like kind of just catering to whatever was popular. Yep. Yep. And it created their own like identity. 
Yep. That authenticity. Authenticity cannot be faked because no, you can try to fake it, but eventually everybody's going to be down with the fact that you're, you know, kind of BSing the authenticity. Yeah. So <laughs> authenticity is great. And I love that. I love that organic journey. So let's play something. What do you guys want to do? Yeah, uh, we were going to play Never Know. And of, of course, we we're going to play Limits after that. But I guess we'll start with Never Know. We'll save to the best for last. I know Limits is, yeah. is uh, spinning around everywhere right now. Yep. Um, but yeah, we will, uh, we're going to play you a song called Never Know. <clears throat> Show me a better off without me Choking on every word you said We'll see We'll see Don't breathe another word about me I'll leave and you can find me rest in peace We'll see When I go out into the world I just don't like what I see You could call it paradise But it looks just like hell to me Lying in between my memories Choking me and I don't know which way to go But I'm okay to never know Lying in between my memories Choking me and I don't know which way to go But I'm okay to never know Speaking in languages we can read No need for you to spell it out for me For me Swallowed up and spit you out Like a drug that just wouldn't stay down Stay down When I go out into I just don't like what I see You could call it paradise But it looks just like hell to me Lying in between my memories Choking me and I don't know which way to go But I'm okay to never know Lying in between my memories Choking me and I don't know which way to go But I'm okay to never know Between our memories, choking me, and I don't know which way to go, but I'm okay to never know. I love the way the songs translate acoustically too. Uh, just great. I was, I was getting that visual thing. I was getting yeah. that visual thing. I was on the journey. I definitely was on the journey. Um, no, you know what else too I wanted to ask you? Um, I've read that you've said that you were uh, brought up in a very religious background. You had a big, religion was a big part of your life growing up. Do you think that that has affected you as a songwriter? Um, I, I, because I think that people that grow up with a lot of religion around them, there's definitely a visual aspect there, you know, yeah, and there's- uh, you, can, you can probably definitely uh, see and hear that both in the songs and in like the videos and uh, just the branding as a whole for the first two records of the band. They were very like, you know, focused around, I think religion and religious imagery and, and I guess concepts and metaphors and whatnot 
Um, so yeah, it definitely influenced me and, and also influenced kind of the way I, I guess I interpret information that's given to me and how uh, apprehensive I am to just take everything at first glance or, you know, just take everything extremely serious, I guess, because I, despite growing up with religion, I'm not actually religious now. And right, right. There's a, there's a lot of, I, it's funny because uh, there's a lot of comments and stuff on our or like videos and stuff. They're like, are they a Christian band now? Or <laughs> Are, are they are they religious or something and it's like we just really enjoy uh the concept itself of it and i think it's such a huge you know idea and image to kind of reference your art from because it's just that's like a universal thing you know like oh yeah. that's something that everyone knows about and understands oh and yeah kind of i don't know i like I, I mostly like to use it as like a metaphor for other things like in you know personifying the God or the devil or whatever as something that someone could relate to even if they weren't, you know, talking or thinking about religion, whether it's a relationship or like an addiction or anything like that, you know, and I, I just think it's a really cool, um, you know, uh, thing to personify any, any kind of experience or, uh, I guess adversity with in a way, but that's something we're kind of straying, like I was talking about kind of growing and changing. That's something we're kind of straying away from with the new music that I'm like, all right, we've kind of, nail this concept and this thing into the ground like let's 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 see what we can do next let's you know? move on and you know but but the music always leaves itself i think for the listener's interpretation which i think is great you know there's always that sort of open you know where i think everything probably means something different to everybody listening to the yeah. music i want to talk also about being inspired when you guys are inspired do you just you guys have studios do you just knock down things in your phone because you guys are churning out you know songs lots and lots of songs yeah, yeah. Uh, so both. so you know how's how's that been working especially in lockdown because i've been asking people too are you feeling more um like creative mm-hmm. more inspired more reflective you know how is how has that worked and and how have you been you know going wow i have this great idea let me run and put it in the computer or put it in my phone yeah no we uh Jolly and I actually, we, like, I think I mentioned this a second ago, but we, we produce full time when we're off tour for other artists as well. And we have like a pretty substantial studio set up in our house. Nice. Um, and yeah, we, we just take days that we're both not busy with other things or like other projects. Um, and we come in here and we just mess around and we just, you know, try different guitar parts or find samples that inspire us or this and that. And then we just, yeah, unless it's an idea, like you said, like it might we be so that we weren't close to a computer and in that case we will hum in your your riff or your lyric or your melody that you had in your phone mm-hmm. because you will forget it 25 seconds later if you don't yeah <laughs> yeah right I right i was like this is sick i'm gonna go home and record it and then i didn't voice memo it and it's gone forever yeah and i come with a lot of melodies in the shower too that yeah. like i don't have my phone in the shower so like while i'm like washing my hair or something i just feel like keep singing <laughs> over and over yeah, so yeah. i don't forget it by the time i get out See, you know what I love about the band and you guys, you guys remind me of, you know, like musicians from back in the day that just lived everything for like the sounds in their head. Mm-hmm. Um, like well, that's where it starts. Think, like, yes. Like bands like that were just, you know, even some of those progressive, you know, classic rock bands that everything was just about the music. And, you know, when I first started listening to you guys and, and hearing the music, I thought these guys are really the real deal. This is really about, about the music. And I love seeing that with a young band because I think a lot of the younger rock fans don't get a whole lot of that. Right. And I think it's really, really important to fly that flag. And while you guys are super original in mm-hmm. everything that you do, it's reminiscent of that for me. No, I, where, I totally understand what you mean. And that's... I think that's what's really helpful about Jolly and I being producers is we get to really put a, an extra like layer of seasoning or whatever you would call it on top of the music besides just the core foundation of most rock songs and metal songs, which is like guitar, drums, bass, and vocals. And a lot of the times, especially these days with the newer music, we usually start songs with like the electronic parts or like the production and the vocals. And then we like build the band stuff around it just because you know, we're not like a crazy techie, like advanced, like math type band that plays really challenging, you know, riffs or anything. Um, so we like to like really drive home like the melody and the rhythms, which is like, to me, like the most primal part of our, you know, enjoyment in music is like either the ability to like move to it or sing to it. And that's like what I enjoy the most in music is singing along to it. So 
I think we make a pretty cool team when it comes to how we like build songs from scratch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And you guys seem to have a good chemistry, just like a good chill kind of chemistry, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah just, no, we just produce this. We, we, yeah, we, yeah, Jolly seems like he's pretty, e- like he seems like an easy going dude. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> easy going. I'll have my days. So it's probably not that easy, you know, but I'll try. I try to keep up my name. Yeah. Uh, the jolly, <laughs> you need it. You need to keep your name going, yeah, we, my friend. It's, it gets, it's exciting and like always, we're always kind of like stirring our brains because in our house we live. We live with a guy that shoots all our music videos and directs them. His name's Ori. Um, so even when we like are in the you know album cycle, like entering an album cycle phase, when we start talking about like visuals and concepts and music videos, we get to just like, hey, you want to meet in the kitchen and like, <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm and meeting everyone and everybody. Bring the dog. Let's go to the kitchen. Yeah. It's cool. That. So we have this like really like DIY like you know you know at home like approach to how we like we do everything with the band and like we're all from Virginia except for Jolly's from Sweden obviously, but like we all just go way back and like, it's just cool. It doesn't feel like processed or like it's been put into some kind of like machine that like the yep. industry just puts together and, right. and pre-production out. then in the yeah, studio. Just, just then you guys got to write, right while you're on the road, then pre-production. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right, absolutely. Yeah. It does not feel like the machine. We have this like, we have this like built in team, even down to like our tour crew. Like we keep everything like consistent and full time. Like we don't like to rotate like, who does sound or who tour manages. Like we just have a really, really like strong and healthy, team of people that work with us on everything outside of like just the music stuff that jolly and i handle that yeah, right. we have so much trust in and it just i don't know what it is i just feel like we're such a well-oiled machine right now we just have like we really have it down at this point after like years of trial and error and like making sure that we're doing the right thing the right way yeah yeah super good yeah, chemistry no, so. super good chemistry um yeah. so you mentioned limits mm-hmm. which now is you know the quote-unquote single um, yeah. And, you know, when you talked about, oh, people have said this song seems very different for you about certain songs, but this song did seem a little bit different, I mm-hmm. thought, for you guys. Um, you know, kind of your radio song. You know, there are songs that are more, you know, radio songs than other songs. Um, yeah. But, man, so catchy. The hook is there. <laughs> the passion is there. Um, so talk to me a little bit about Limits. What, what was the inspiration behind the tune? Um, well, <laughs> ironically enough, that song was written a, a long time actually before it was uh, released. And, um, it, it lyrically, it was slightly inspired just by like people not getting the full story on things. We had like some like pretty silly and petty drama, uh, a couple years back, uh, with the tour that we had dropped off of and, and they had like made it seem like it was a really like petty and stupid reason that we dropped when there was so much more to it than that. And they just, kind of painted us in this really like goofy light in front of their fans and they were the headliners so they're much bigger than us and they have way more reach and they tried to just uh i don't know embarrass us in a sense because we decided not to drag us in the dirt yeah and uh to us it was like yo this is us saying this is how little we care about your tour if this is how like you're gonna act we will we just won't do it and at the time we had a record to write too that was before the second record was out and we were like already touring so much we never had time to work on it and i was like dude i'm not going to be bummed if we just get to go home and work on this album instead that's what i really want to be doing in the first place like we've been touring all year these same markets and same venues and yeah it just got like really ridiculous for a minute on the internet and like there was just constant like just back and forth clashing between like our fans and their fans and it was just so silly but that was kind of like what originated uh the idea behind the song um, and just the inspiration for the lyrics. Cause we're not like, I don't feel like we're the type of band to make like a call out song. That's like <laughs> in a corny way, you know? So we like to keep it still like, yeah, don't you know, picture you guys and, like that. <laughs> and, and open, open enough. Like, yeah, we like still have to carry ourselves like adults, right. you know? So but there like was inspiration behind this. You know, yeah, there was inspiration. Yeah, and it, it was a and life. still in a way that other people can relate. It's not yeah, like, I got it. You know, got it. So. You know, a, a life experience that uh, just inspired, inspired the tune. Great tune. Um, I'm dying to hear it, you know, it's mm-hmm. scaled down a little bit because um, yeah. I always say a great tune is a great tune is a great tune. So, um, you know, yeah, you, yeah, I love it. You can't, you can't hide that. So let's do it. It's bad omen right. and limits. Right. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's do it. Let's play limits. What's chord. the first chord? Yep. Cool. Oh, I've got to, got to find the note. All right. Yeah. 
Well, everyone's listening, and they know the difference when I'm failing our senses. If you're throwing me to the lions, you should know I'm not scared of dying. I wouldn't take that one thing I did, one word I said. But I'm gonna make you wish you dead. Jump to conclusions, they fall for illusions, but you wouldn't dare try to stop them. You're going low at the end of the road, but that won't be the path that I follow. So much unsaid left me for day, I won't forget. Well, everyone's listening, and they know the difference. You're not failing our senses. If you throw in me to the lions, you should know I'm not scared of dying. I wouldn't take by one thing I did, one word I said. But I'm gonna make you wish you could. Well, everyone's listening, and they know the difference. You're not failing our senses, but you're pushing my limits. If you throw it me to the lions, you should know I'm not scared of dying. I wouldn't take back one thing I did, one word I said. You should know I'm not scared of dying. I wouldn't stand by one thing I did, one word I said. Oh God, I'll make you wish you did. Nice. <laughs> here she is. Oh, puppy. Woo! <laughs> she in here? No, I love it. Love it. Oh, there he is. I didn't see. Hey. hey. That's so, you know what I was thinking too? I mean, it's just so incredible um, hearing a song that I know, you know, and it's, just, it's a whole different song. You know, it's just a yeah, whole yeah. different song. It's just uh, so good. So good. Guys, I cannot thank you enough for hanging out with me. I feel like, I, I feel like we did like our own little TV show here, you know, and, and for those, if you don't know Bad Omens, I always say like for certain bands, if you don't know the band, know the band because, you know, being in a lockdown and people not being able to go out to shows and stuff, if you've not discovered new music, um, you're doing yourself a real disservice. The record is so good. It's finding God before God finds me. And I thank you guys so much for hanging out. You know, there's nothing I love more than new bands that are dynamic, unique, and fearless. And yeah, I think you guys fit us. the bill for all this three. Our, this is our first time doing this on Zoom, too. So thank you. Thank oh, you yeah. for having us. Oh, awesome. And I told you my dog would end up invading at some point. There. You heard the music. She came over. She's sort of like, hey. Oh, my God. She's so cute. Hey. Uh, guys, can't wait to see your faces. You know, when you guys are touring and you're out in the New York, New Jersey area, uh, looking mm -hmm. so forward to seeing the band nope, live. Um, Noah and Jolly, thank you so much from Bad Omens. Thank, thank you. you. Have a good one. DHA's Reconnect with Rockers is powered by Advantage Contracting and by Karis Lock Company.